An exclusive News Channel 5 investigation reveals shocking conduct by a veteran state investigator. His job was to review a racially charged complaint that we first told you about here last night. Well, tonight, investigative reporter Ben Hall explains why that state worker is now out of a job. Ben? Well, the state claims its investigator tried to intimidate the man who filed the complaint, raising serious questions about past state investigations. If he was doing that to me, how many other people has he done that to? Sean Mullins was not alone when he met with Department of Health investigator Bill Sewell. I was there just to listen. An executive from the NAACP and an acquaintance listened as Sewell opened with a question. His very first question was, Mr. Mullins, have you ever been to the penitentiary? That was more than insulting to me. That was also just the beginning. Sewell was there to investigate a racially charged complaint filed by Mullins involving the death of his mother. He claimed the town's deputy fire chief refused to do CPR on her, then falsified medical reports to cover it up. I don't want to leave it alone. I want justice, true justice. After asking about prison and hearing about the final moments of Dorothy Mullins' life, Sewell ended the meeting in a shocking way. Mr. Sewell goes into a story that he had been told about hanging a black man. Affidavits from all involved say he went into disturbing details about a lynching and the mutilation of a black man's body in Sewell's hometown of Baxter many years ago. They lowered the body and all the white men standing around took turns removing the skin from this black man's back. It was like he got excited telling the story. So he was standing up and doing his hands like how they was carving the skin out of his back and everything. The three say Sewell finished with a shocking detail, that he still owned a strap of the lynched man's skin, passed down from his grandfather. And they made a, a, a belt strap of his skin, and they used the, the um, strap for a knife sharpener. It was like it was a trophy to him, and that that concerns me. It was my impression that he had it at his house. I, the way he was enjoying telling the story, I thought perhaps he was still using it. An internal health department investigation obtained by News Channel 5 Investigates reveals the department believes Sewell told the story to put Mullins on the defensive and intimidate him because he possibly knew the deputy fire chief. Were you intimidated? By all means. I felt threatened. If they choose to conclude that that was an intimidating comment, I'm sorry. Bill Sewell sat down with us and claimed he was not trying to intimidate anyone. It was a gruesome story. Uh, I got caught up in the moment of trying to convince these people that I understood, and I just went too far. He says he was trying to show them that he understood bias in small towns. When you left that interview, did you think you had done anything wrong? No, no. We Even though you would, you would ask if he'd been in prison yes. and told that story, Yes. how could you not think you did anything wrong? We concluded that interview with handshakes. Thank you, you know, with, with appreciation for their time. Sewell says he got that razor strap from his grandfather, who was mayor of Baxter. It hung in his grandfather's warehouse for years, and he took it home when the family sold the building. And where is that strap today? It's in somebody's landfill. I went downstairs in my storage. I went through my entire boxes. That strap is gone. Sewell said he was not even sure if the story behind the strap was true. But we discovered in 1896 there was a lynching in Baxter, and the victim's body was mutilated. It's above anything that I can imagine any person telling, let alone a representative of the state of Tennessee. The state forced Sewell to resign, ending his 40-year career with the Department of Health. Who is the victim in this situation? I am. And why are you the victim? I am the victim because I made a mistake. To take a man's job away from him is a serious matter. But Mr. Sewell, when he made that statement to me, he had no concern about how I was feeling.
The state has assigned a new investigator to the Mullins case. That investigation is not over. The national NAACP is also looking at this entire case.